Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming to you with a vlog, because, uh, it's been a while. Been a while since I made a vlog. Um, probably kind of a good thing. Uh, there was a thing on Twitter that was, uh, remarkably stupid. We won't go into that here, but, uh, regardless... Um, mainly talking to you guys about the rotation I've been trying to accomplish with the videos. Uh, I have noticed, uh, more than once, uh, or mainly just once, but, uh, I've been messaged from other people as well in other places, uh, outside of YouTube that people are wondering where videos are, if I'm just dropped a series off entirely, and, uh, there's reasons for that. Um, some of them are more or less not engaging you guys as much as I would like. Uh, some of you guys just don't want to watch them, and I understand that. Some people are doing better versions of, you know, these videos, so... I understand you not wanting to watch mine. Mine aren't that good. I get that. Even with my stupid-ass jokes, which are very plentiful, <laughs> some people are just making better quality content of these, and I get that. I, I understand. So, you being a little exhausted on it and not wanting to watch it, I get that. So, I don't hold that against you. Um, but I feel like I don't want to put my effort into those things if they're not catching you guys' attention. So, what I'm going to do, uh, essentially, is that for number one, Resident Evil will be on hiatus. Resident Evil 2, the remake uh, playthrough, that will be on hiatus for now. I'm not sure if I'm going to get back to it. Um... When it comes to other games like uh, Destroy All Humans, that one was kind of uh, a bit of that and also a bit of my enthusiasm for playing the game started to wane, primarily because it gets into the grindy bits, the grating and very slow and annoying bits uh, near the end, just before the big finale, and unfortunately that does make my desire to play the game uh, hampered, but then there's pure difficulties on the technical side like I'm having with Fable 3. Fable 3 in particular is drastically bad in the emulation. I don't know what's happened. None of the other games are having this problem. When games are having this problem, a simple refresh of deleting them and reinstalling them usually fixes the problem. I don't know what's going on with Fable 3. This is the same problem that's, you know, sprung up in Fable 2. We've, we've seen that, and it's just getting worse. I can even show you a clip of it right here to let you know what's going on. And I mean, even here, the footage kind of speaks for itself. I mean... The audio bug is pretty much entirely present, even when I go to the start menu. Might have a look in the sanctuary shop. I'm Fable 3's there version of start menu. It just permeates the entire experience in here as well. And then it's doing jitters like that on top of bringing back the audio bug even stronger when I come back. And... Okay, that's a hell of a look. All right. And... Huh. Last time I tried to run it, this pillar didn't even show any textures whatsoever. So, that's an improvement. Um, yeah, it just consistently has the audio bug now, even when you're... Not even doing much of anything intensive. I don't know if it's just this area or if it's the entire game. I haven't actually tested anything past this because this is rather distressing on its own. So, as far as I can tell, 
this is a uh, this is not a good look and there's the clip so now you guys understand the game is degrading and I don't know why I don't understand why the emulation has been broken as much as it is right now I don't know if they're ever going to fix it quite frankly they probably never will so what I might have to do is I might have to pop my 360 out of cold storage and dust off, you know, all the gick and shit that's probably on it right now. There's not that much gick. I'm, I'm living in an apartment. There's not that much stuff. Uh, it's probably been in a box somewhere in the apartment I just haven't gotten to yet. But um, I'm probably going to have to kick that out of the box and dust it off and get it going because right now the emulation is just broken and I don't know what's going on so I'm going to go with the actual hardware and the actual game files the way it should be going considering the saves are all saved to the cloud anyway I should be able to manage that and we'll just see how it goes but until I get that all taken care of that game's going to be on hiatus it has been on hiatus for quite a while um, other than that, um, most of the other games you guys are loving, uh, and I'm loving playing them, so I'm going to keep up a lot of the rest of the roster when it comes to that. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to add anything new yet. Um, as it stands, I'm already having enough difficulty maintaining the rotation with what I have, but I figured I should let you guys know. Uh, what the plans for the channel are in the future. Now, that said, uh, a lot of things have been uh, grading on me this month. Uh, it's been making uh, finding the energy to record a little difficult. Uh, we have a big ass corporate walkthrough at work coming up, and I have been stressing. Uh, trying to make sure the place is clean and, you know, looking, you know, good for the corporate people to come through because while the way that the fuel station operates, or at least it does in Oregon where I am, uh, the way that it operates is detached from the main grocery store that it's technically next to, but the way the business operates is technically detached from that so in that regard I have less of the store breathing down my neck for things that need to be you know maintained and whatnot but I have corporate breathing down my neck for that it's a lot scarier a proposition when you're actually living it so it can be a little challenging to make sure you're up to snuff especially with a crew that is as colorful <laughs> as mine um, some of them are good and some of them have their good points the ones with the good points also have multiple bad points that tend to become an issue one in particular had a particular moment that I don't know how to describe without making him look bad. Um, unfortunately, there isn't a lot I can do to not make him look bad in this situation. Um, there, there's a particular product, Dippin' Dots. Um, it's like an ice cream sort of thing, but it has to be maintained at a very low temperature otherwise it starts to degrade and melt and just go bad um, this is a problem that's happened in the past when power's gone out and sometimes it's unavoidable in this particular instance one of these guys' moms went actually into the emergency room due to a semi-stroke uh, I don't remember what it was exactly. He didn't remember what it was exactly, but it was fairly frightening, especially with the condition she's been in the last few months. So he immediately rushed to her side. I don't blame him 
as far as I'm concerned, he was okay doing so. Uh, we had to leave one of our newer, you know, newer hires to run the station by himself in a uh, general time frame where it's very slow and it wasn't too big a risk to do so. And while I do understand it was a strange situation to put him in and I try not to judge him too harshly for it, there was a thing that severely questioned his, let's just say his uh, situational awareness. As we were talking about earlier, the dip and dots have to be maintained at a constant temperature to stay good, sellable condition. Uh, so it needs to be plugged in at all times to power in some way, shape, or form. That, like how refrigeration usually works. Uh, what we do to... It's a rolling rack to try and maintain a semblance of security so the entire thing isn't just hauled off by some motherfucker. Uh, we actually roll it into our kiosk, which we have locked up during the night. Um, so that way it's not out and about and just easy to grab and haul off. Uh, it's usually plugged in outside and re-plugged in inside because, as I said, it requires a very low temperature to maintain and it needs power to do so. He is not all that new. He has been here for fairly into a year, uh, if not, you know, a full year, then at least half to two-thirds of a year with this crew. For some reason, he did not think that it needed to be plugged in when it was brought inside. Even though he has done this particular shift and been a part of this particular half of the crew, for all of the time he's worked here. I don't know how he got it into his head that it didn't need to be plugged in, but considering the product needs to be at negative 40 degrees to stay in a decent enough condition to sell. One would have thought that the situation would have for lack of a better phrase, suggested that he might need to plug it back in. He didn't do that. It went through the entire night without power, without refrigeration, until my other guy, uh, a guy that I very much trust, came in at opening because I was off that day and found out from him it went from the negative 40 that it was supposed to be to zero. Now, I should mention, because I know a good portion of my viewers are, you know, you, uh, outside of the American uh, landscape, so I should probably mention that this is all in Fahrenheit degrees, negative 40 I don't know what it would be for Celsius, it should be pretty close, but uh, Celsius uh, for zero degrees, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to look it up, I don't have my phone with me so I can't really do it right now, but uh, it's very not good when the temperature it's at is 40 degrees higher than it's supposed to be that usually means something's gone terribly wrong. Now, luckily, because of the way that the fridge is built and the way that the product was set up, most of it was fine. Uh, most of the product on the edges, uh, mainly on the corners, were fine. So we didn't actually lose all that much product. But I had to text the crew member in question after this particular incident to figure out what went wrong. 
he responded with, Oh, you're supposed to plug that in? What? Was my response. He responded, Well, it made sense afterwards when I was going home, but at the time, I thought it was fine. At that point, all I could respond with was, Ellipses, dude. Really? That was where that conversation ended. I'm glad it did. I could not... I could not ensure that I was not going to say anything else that would have been a little more cutting at that point. But I just didn't know what to think. That was odd. I, um, yeah, that was something. And that's my anecdote for the day. So anyway, um, just to sum up this very weird vlog that it now is, um, stuff at work is getting to me. Stuff at work is also weird as shit sometimes. And I might change up how things are going for the time being. I'm not entirely sure, again, if I'm going to add anything new. I'm already having trouble keeping up with the rotation that I have. But be assured that I'm going to try and get through all of the videos, or rather all of the content that I have available through the week and make it all a weekly thing. That doesn't guarantee I'm going to be able to get it that way all the time, but I will do my damnedest to make sure I can. So, this is your first video to let you know what's going on and share weird story anecdotes about managing a fuel station with a very odd crew. Very, very odd crew. Anyway. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games and the other weird shenanigans we deal with together. And I will see you all in the next video. And shout out to SVS on YouTube for subscribing to my Patreon and supporting the channel. I very much appreciate it. Thank you. This has been the one the only Stray Cat. Playing games, vlogging, managing a shit show occasionally and more often than not an actually great crew of individuals who sometimes have very strange opinions and ideas on how things work and all that shenanigans for you.